Now, one question I get asked uh, reasonably frequently is how to create panoramas uh, rather than using a smartphone. Of course, we can use a digital camera. So here I was standing in front of a very wide sort of landscape and I ended up shooting six frames. So here are some tips for shooting a panorama and I'll show you how to process it using Adobe Lightroom. The first tip I can give you, I think it's probably the best tip when you're shooting panoramas, is to shoot vertically in the portrait format. Why? Well, inevitably, uh, most of us don't use a tripod. We're a little bit sloppy when we come to shoot uh, panoramas, and I include myself in that description. You know, you just go pop, 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 there we go, that's a panorama. And we may not be able to shoot exactly on the level. So inevitably, once it's stitched together, it's going to need cropping top and bottom. So if you shoot a landscape format, they're all on the side. Once you crop it, you even get less height than you actually planned. So shoot it vertically, and then you're kind of less worried about uh, cropping a little bit later on. That means if you're shooting vertically, you probably have to shoot a couple of extra frames. And I generally shoot five frames in a panorama. I got greedy here and I shot six because it was a very wide scene. Second thing that I can say is overlap those frames pretty generously. And in this case, I think I've overlapped them probably 15 to 20 percent. But you can overlap them 40 percent, 50 percent, whatever you like. Simply put, if you overlap them very generously, what happens is you may just have to tack on an extra section or two in order to keep the panorama nice and wide. That's pretty much why I've got six sections to this panorama. Now, that's pretty much all. You can put your camera on a tripod. Most people don't bother. You can shoot in manual mode. You can shoot in manual focusing mode. You can shoot in custom white balance mode. Those are three things you can add to your list of things to do, but most of us don't bother. We just go, wow, okay. I'll put it into AV mode or aperture mode. I'll set it to F8 or F11 on a bright sunny day, maybe 200 or 400 ISO, ISO and then pop, pop, pop. Easy peasy. Okay, so we've got six frames here. I'm going to shift click the lot and in Adobe Lightroom we're going to head off to the photo department, the photo drop down menu, and you'll see here photo merge. Now this is familiar. If you've ever used uh, Photoshop or Photoshop Elements, it's a process called photo merge. So this is kind of a, I hate to use the term dumb down, but this is a simplified version of photo merge. Look how good that is. Bang. It's just done it. So this of course is a preview. It's not, if I zoom in, it's not really um, the best quality, they've just sort of run it through and it's actually stitched it beautifully. So in Photoshop and Photoshop Elements you have the option to add things like uh, uh, merging, the, uh, merging the image a little bit more, that kind of thing. Um, it's included in this particular program so you don't actually have to click anything to say yes or no. It just automatically does it. The only thing you can try is to try stitching it using a different type of format. So for example perspective was probably appropriate if you're doing a panorama of a city. You've got nice tall straight buildings and they bend when you stitch them together. So using the perspective option may be the go in that case. Landscape doesn't really matter. So the cylindrical one works pretty well. Let's have a look at spherical and see what that does. It seems to do exactly the same job just as well, except it's very, very slightly not quite as high. There we go. See that just a tiny little bit higher. So I'm going to go for the higher option. I'm going to choose auto crop. Okay. But if you wanted a higher image, you could get very clever in the final version export this to Adobe Photoshop and then clone very cleverly the sky into the white bits and the land into the white bits of the base. So you could actually preserve the original height of your, uh, uh, pa your panorama. Um, I'm going to be lazy. I'm going to say just auto crop and I'm going to merge. So what we were looking at there, of course, was a bit of a preview, a bit of a low resolution preview, and that's why it's so quick. But I'm sure you'll find that when we look at the panorama once it's done, it's pretty darn excellent. So remember, this is six frames shot on a Canon 5D Mark III. It's shooting a 21 megapixel, I think it's 21 megapixel file. So we'll end up with something pretty big, about 100 megabytes, if not a little bit bigger. Uh, Adobe Lightroom seems to convert whatever you're using. In this case, these are six raw files. The panorama, the finished stitch panorama that we can see here, just wait half a second for it to actually auto crop. Should just do that fairly quickly. Um, once it's auto cropped, uh, it'll save it as a DNG file. Now I'll just turn that off and let's go into loop mode. It seems to be struggling away to auto crop and you can see it's a .dng file. So it's 116 megabytes, it's a very big file. It's a DNG, a dot .digital negative file which is pretty good and now I can go and edit it uh, and make it look absolutely beautiful. An alternative of course is to go into Lightroom, select the six pictures here right click on any one of those pictures and say look hey let's edit this in Adobe Photoshop CC in order to access some of those kind of more esoteric controls. I'm very happy with the panorama that it's done. I'm going to say open anyway. 
I'm very happy with what Lightroom's done, but we'll just go and have a look and see what it does in Adobe Photoshop. So as they gradually open in, you can see they're just uh, uh, CR2, CR2. So we've got six Canon RAW files. Very, very simple. And what we do here is if I just uh, get the window resized so it all fits in, you can see, we go to the File menu, of course, and we go to File Automate. And kind of down at the bottom, there's Photo Merge. So pretty much the same as you'll find in Lightroom, but this is a little bit more advanced. So because all those pictures are already opened in Adobe Photoshop, I'm going to say, uh, OK, let's just add the open files. There they are. They just populate that window in the middle. And you can see on the left hand side, we do actually have kind of more options here. We can add perspective, cylindrical, spherical, collage, and we can actually manually reposition the sections if we think uh, we need to do that. But as you saw in the Lightroom version, I think it did a pretty good, uh, pretty good job. We also have a thing called vignette removal, and I always kind of use that and blend images together. I don't know why you wouldn't actually. I can't think of any example when you wouldn't blend the images together. And this kind of stuff happens in the background in Lightroom, whereas here we can, uh, we can turn it on or turn it off. So let's click OK, stand back and see what happens. All right, so rather than waiting uh, ages for this to happen, because it may take a couple of minutes to do it, I'm just going to put us on pause and we'll come back and see the final object. So a couple of minutes later, here is the finished product. You can see that it's made these beautiful masks on the right hand side in the layer palette, uh, taking you know, pretty much what it wants from various sections and padding them up. Now you'll see there's a few little cracks in the panoramic process. This is kind of weird, but it's just an optical illusion because if I zoom in, he says, hopefully, there we go, the cracks disappear. If I zoom out to a certain viewing distance, the cracks also disappear, I hope. There we go, it dis almost disappears. So it's really something when you print it, you're not going to see those cracks. It's just kind of a resolution thing. Now, of course, when we're doing this, it doesn't have an uh, automatic cropping device. So I will then have to physically choose the crop tool, bring it down to size, more or less like that, and click Enter, and away we go. What's interesting is... Uh, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six layers. It's 968 megabytes without flattening it. So I clearly need to go to my layer menu up here and I need to choose flatten image because I don't really need a Photoshop or a layered image like that. Even flattened, it's 540 megabytes. So it's a very large file compared to the 116 megabyte DNG file that we had via Adobe Lightroom. So this is a giant file. So if we go and have a look at our image and uh, the image size dialog box, you can see here it's 18,400 pixels wide. Wow, that's a really big file uh, at 240 dots per inch. Um, and it's going to print at 540 megabytes. It's going to print very, very big. So if we change that into, let's say, inches, it's 76 inches. Let's change it into centimeters. It's nearly two meters by half a meter high. OK, so you can wallpaper your house with that. So it's pretty cool. So it is a bit larger. It is certainly a little bit larger in terms of the size of the file, but the actual 18,000 by 5,126 pixels is very similar to the one that we've achieved using Adobe Lightroom. Let's have a look at the Lightroom version. If we go into loop mode and we check the information, you can see it's 116 million pixels, 116 megapixels, uh, but it's 18,000. So it's almost identical size. I've done a little bit of different cropping. Uh, that's the difference between finally uh, outputting as a DNG file in terms of the light, Adobe Lightroom and the Adobe Photoshop version here, uh, which again needs a tiny bit of cropping just on that right hand side. I think we've got a little bit of, I'm never going to get it exactly right. There we go. So it's going to be 540, 538. So I need to save this either as a DNG file or probably more usefully as um, a basic JPEG, and that's going to squash it down a little bit. And of course, now we can go on either in Lightroom or in Adobe Photoshop to add some brightness, add some, um, some adjustment layers to edit it to uh, its final state.